You got a drunk click. You know what I'm saying? That thing went all the way around the world before you get in there. You better sober up, boy. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn that the word of truth that's given to us by the most high God. All honor. It looked like dark Easter in here. You know what I'm saying? It looked like, it looked like, it looked like it looked like a cookie be filling with an Easter and everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like dark Easter. I gotta usually I just gotta look at a couple of eyes, you know what I'm saying? A couple of eyes are easy today, you know what I'm saying? I gotta remember who I met. Sabbath peace, uh, what was that? This is another opportunity. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to them that's given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest and made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, Peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that can make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to uh, Exodus chapter 12. This is Exodus chapter 12. You know what I'm saying? For everybody who tuned in for the weekly editions, this is a special episode. You know what I'm talking about? What do you call this? It's a special Easter episode. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, it's um last night was the Passover. You know what I'm saying? So we about to talk about Passover and unleavened bread and uh talk about what it means to our people. Next week we'll get right back to our regular scheduled program. We gotta pick up next week at Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam is the son of Solomon, Jeroboam is the is the uh, son of Nebat. The son of Nebat from Ephraim. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the condition of our people as we left. This is uh, Exodus chapter 12. Give me verse 1. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, It's a little hot in here. This month. Y'all hot? That's, that's because okay. we're used to having this many people. Yeah, you know, uh, hit somebody. Who know how to work an air conditioning? You can't, trust, to yeah, you can't trust none of these darn boys. <laughs> you can't, you can't trust none of these darn boys. Mel, I can trust you to work an air conditioner. Huh? Can you turn that air just, you know what I'm saying? Hit the one that say H slash C. Press it until it say cool on the on the digital thing. And after that, press it down. Or just press that down until you just press it down. I'm a little, you know what I mean? Good gracious. Hot darn. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, what we got is Exodus chapter 12. Give me verse 1. We'll see what the book is at. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be to you the beginning of months. This month shall be to you the beginning of months. We, we celebrated that about 14, 15 days ago, right? We celebrated the beginning of months. These people call it, what they call it? What, what Easter? They call it New Year, don't New they? New Year. Right? When January 1st comes, they call it New Year. Our book is called The Beginning of Months. This is the first, this is the first day of the first month. Right? That was earlier this month. So now, watch this. Keep going. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Mm -hmm. Speak unto the children, unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. Alright, so on the tenth day of the month, we are supposed to take a lamb. Right? The tenth day of the month would have been Sunday. Right? So we are supposed to take a lamb. Right, and we get a lamb. After we get that lamb, we pick a lamb out for the household. Right, this is what our people had to do. Right, so we get a lamb, we take that one, we look at one for the household, and be like, "No, that's a nice looking one right there." How many people y'all got in y'all family? Y'all got okay. Y'all only got y'all only got. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all that's a big family. You know what I'm saying? Get two lamb. Give me another lamb. You know what I'm saying? That that brother Daniel's lamb. You know what I'm saying? Do you get a smaller family? Like you only got two people. Well, I only got two people too. We can share a lamb. So you get you get a lamb to share too. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody kind of picked a lamb that they're going to end up slaughtering on the Passover. What does the book say? <coughs> you go tell. Take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Uh huh. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Of the souls. Right. Every man according to his eating shall make your 
count for the lamb, right? So every man according to his eating. So if, if a family, if you know you got a family that eat a lot, I might have to give me two lambs. That's what he's saying. And if you know your family don't eat a lot, then it's like, okay, well, maybe I share a lamb with my with my neighbor, right? So on the tenth day, that's when we pick a lamb. What's the significance of this? Because that's when the people chose y'all sure. That's right. Ooh. Right? Grab a. Uh, ooh, let's see. Ooh, it's, ooh, it's been a ten. long time. Ten? Uh, some, he say ten. Yeah, what I'm going to say? I'm going to say twelve. Twelve? I think ten. Or fifteen. No, it can't be fifteen. So you say ten, I'm going with twelve. I'm sticking with twelve. Ten or eleven. Oh, eleven might be it. <laughs> uh, let's start with ten then. Let's try ten we first. Know. I know by the first verse. Give me, give me ten verse one. John? Yeah, John chapter 10, verse 1. It ain't John 10. It can't be John 10. Mm, one of them 10s. Nah, it can't be John 10. Nah, it's... Uh, I still think it's 12. Let me see. I think it's 12. It's 12. John 12. It's John chapter 12. I don't know what verse it is. Uh, I'm looking for it. I'm going to throw one Let's out there. See. I'm going to say, I like verse 9. I feel like you can't miss with verse 9. You just say verse 9. This is uh, John chapter 12, verse 9. Let's see what the book is. 12. 12, 12. I wouldn't have been able to miss. If we started at 9, I'd have been all right. What? Let's start at 9. <laughs> Let's see what 9 say. All right. This is John chapter 9. I mean, John chapter 12, verse 9. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. Who are the Jews? <clears throat> Hebrew. <coughs> our people, right? That's our people. The whole world confused right now. People that believe the Bible, they can't even properly understand what's going on in the world because we've been conditioned to think, you know, that that black people that came from the, the American slave trade, or not the American slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade, we've been conditioned to think that those are just Africans. Right, just regular old Africans just running around. What they teach y'all in school? What they teach you in school, Jay? What they teach you in school about the, the slave trade? How that happen? You know, they probably don't even teach it. Do they teach it? They don't say nothing about the slave trade. Colombians. Oh, that's a cold game. They don't talk about how black people used to be slaves in this country. Yeah, you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's a cold game. That's a cold yeah, game. Like, that's a cold little game. They don't even mention the slave trade. Do y'all know that black people were slaves here? Yeah, TJ brought home some stuff that he was reading that talked about slaves. They probably didn't go deep into it, but like they. Yeah, they just They'd be like, yeah. They got, they like the Maria, the Santa Maria, the Pentecost, what is it called? They teach y'all about the three boats that the, the white folk came around? They teach y'all about that either? The Mayflower. Oh, oh they just don't teach you. Yeah, the Mayflower, the Santa Maria, and well, the. I only know the Mayflower. The second grade. No, three of them, though. Wasn't it three of them? I guess. Yeah, yeah it was like the, the, what was the other one? It was some Mexican names, wasn't it? Yeah. That's disrespectful. They wasn't Mexican. They wasn't Mexican, but it was some Spanish names. It was the it was the Mayflower. I don't know how that got there. How they get that from a Mexican name? They got the Mayflower, the Santa <coughs> Maria. Oh, well, and it was one that started with a P, wasn't it? The Pinna, yeah, something like that. Yeah, somebody look that up for me, cause now I want to. You know what I'm saying? No, they don't know the answer. Either. They probably went to the same school system we did. Sharon did for sure. So Pamela, I don't know. So Pamela, you might know. What, what was all the white people vote? They probably missed. So they mentioned to y'all about the Mayflower, and they're like, yeah, and then they, were, they just skipped, and they were slaves. You know what I'm saying? Like, the white folk came over here on the Mayflower and landed on what rock? Plymouth Rock. Right, landed on Plymouth Rock, and slaves were there. That's how they be teaching y'all? That's a cold little game, man. Sheesh, Louise. What they teach you? Well, now, right now? Yeah, what they be teaching? They teach us how, like, What'd she say? The Penta? What'd she say? That's it. The Penta? Yeah, what it was. It was the Penta. It was the... It was the they teach you the, the Santa Maria and the Mayflower and the Penta? No? No, but look. They taught it to her. They just don't remember it. 
You ain't not, you ain't don't even don't even let your brain fill too much up with that stuff. I ain't mad at you when I remember it. The Romans what? King Arthur. King Arthur had slaves? Ain't that not real? King Arthur ain't a real dude. Ain't he like legend? I don't know. Nah, nah, Romans ain't got nothing to do with what we talking about, son. You look at it, we we were slaves, so we had we had the transatlantic slave trade. And so what they used to teach us, right? And what if when you when you grow up and you get to talking to white folks that think they know history, what they gonna do is they gonna dis what? They gonna what they gonna do is they gonna they gonna try to teach you that Africans, right? So Africa is a big old continent, right? It's not a country, it's a continent, right? A continent is a big old land mass with a bunch of different countries in it typically, right? So they're gonna try to teach y'all that Africa <clears throat> had a whole bunch of black people in it, right? And black people generally in this part of the world, because of us, it's not, it ain't even, it ain't even all these, other, it's a lot of black people in the world, right? Mostly black people in the world, right? What happens is because of our type of black people, just the Hebrews, which we're only a subset of black people, because of us, they get, they all get a bad rap, right? So what happened was they say that all the black people in Africa turned on each other, and it was black on black crime, and then they sold each other into slavery, and that's how our people got here. But that's that's an oversimplification of the story. That's not really how it happened, right? There's a lot of different, just, just like you know, there's a lot of different types of white people, right? Do all are all white people the same? No, right? You got some white people that's from Russia, Russia, Australia, England, darn England, Italy, Italy, darn Lee. You know what I'm talking about? You know, there are all these different places that you can get white for, white for, from, and they proud of their culture and they know they different. Matter of fact, they argue with they listen. You take to the average white person, they ain't messing with no darn Irish. You know what I'm saying? I'm Italian. I ain't messing with, I'm, I'm Sicilian. You think I'm going to talk to her with the Irish? Well, you something different, right? The folks right now, there's some white folks, staunch white folks, whiter than can be. They ain't messing with no darn Russians. Russian collusion, right? You know what I'm saying? They, they over there, they helping you. They're, they're white folks right now, helping Ukraine try to kill Russians as much as they can. Poor Ukrainian getting talked in and getting their butt whooped. They over there getting bombed and killed. All the these people. They're talking Ukraine and getting their butt whooped. I mean, they're getting their stuff knocked out. Not a lot. No, you, know you, can, you can take Russia. Go ahead and go over there and fight. Them boys getting mopped. You know, I'm still feeling like my, you know what I'm saying? My whole tax return went to Ukraine. I just knew I was gonna listen. I just knew I was gonna get a little something back. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, oh, baby, don't worry about it. what you want. No, we can go shopping right now. And they said, you know, they try to get the type of stuff in there. You know what I'm saying? And usually it go up. You know what I'm saying? You type it in. Like, oh, no, watch. Watch when I hit this button, no. You know what I'm saying? You hit that thing, that thing said, you know what I'm saying? It turned gray. That thing turned, I was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Control, delete. You know what I'm saying? I don't look like these people. But you see, Ukraine. They white folk and they fighting other white folks and Ukraine whole thing is no, we different from Russia. So just like these white folks have have the, the grace from the rest of the world to understand the difference and the uniqueness about them, it's the same way with black folks. There's a lot of black people from different places. You got black folks from Zimbabwe and they got their own dark tribe. Got the little lip on you know, there, got the thing in there running around. That's them and you should respect their stuff. But let me tell you what we ain't never did. You know what I'm saying? We ain't never stretched out our darn neck, you know what I'm saying? Put a bunch of rings. That's not us. That's them. Respect they stuff, though. That, that's not us. That wasn't us. You can't lump us in with them people. It's a whole different people. They got different daddies, different backgrounds. We ain't even related until you get to know and his kids. Right? We not the same type of people. We don't have the same DNA. We don't have the same nothing. So what happened was Hebrews went into Africa. To Africa. Yeah, went into Africa because of hiding, because these white folks was messing us up. We got to, you know, get on the run. Most high God, he punished us for disobeying us. So we went into Africa, we hiding. Other black people was in Africa. And just like these white folks, they recognized that y'all are not the same as us. Oh, and guess what? We all Muslims. What is y'all worshiping? Oh, you don't want to lay down. You don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Who, who know about gang culture a little bit? 
You know what I'm saying? Like you get into you get into the game coach is like, okay, look, I'm from Gerson's. Right? You might be a crip. Sometimes the Gerson's cool with the blood. Sometimes. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes. You had the BG, you know what I'm saying? I used to run around my boy Matty on the BG. It was great when I saw him. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? But they all hate Crips, though. I never went to Crip City. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I just would never, you know what I'm saying? The kid, I see the kid, I'll be like, listen, I'm just come, I'm going to jump out there, open the door, I'm just going to run in. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Then we chilling. That's it. Right? I know the territory. So just like that, guess what happens? Why are y'all over here? That's what the Africans are saying. The native Africans, right? They got their tribe. They're like, y'all not from my tribe. And then you got to think about our people. What what's different about our people? We might have been a little smart or stupid. Who knows? Resourceful, maybe. She's saying all the positive stuff. We was stuck up. We was stuck up. We there's no other nation that can say, "Hey, God chose us." So imagine that we run it. These white folks about to get us. And our whole conversation is, we ain't, we don't never lose our confidence. Our whole conversation is, hey, we made it. We oh, God about to kill them boys because we the chosen people. So we walk into this land, probably looking down on these Africans. They got their neck all stretched out, lip all darn buttoned up, bunch of rings in. I'm looking like, you darn savage. Y'all some darn Gentiles. That's, what, that's how we talking to these other black people. We love them now. Y'all not like us. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? That's nasty. Then they looking like, well, we Muslims. Y'all this. Y'all got to lay down. Everybody got to lay down. That's cool. We don't do that. So they start killing us off. And they start making us prisoners of war. Then they cut a deal with the white folks, the Europeans. And when they cut that deal with the Europeans, the Europeans, you know what I'm saying? Y'all heard of, y'all, they taught y'all about Christopher Columbus, right? No. Nope. They teach you about Christopher Columbus? <coughs> he's still young. Way. You know, he's still young. They're going to teach you eventually about Christopher They, they still shouldn't talk to you about him. That's one of they, that's the white pride and joy. <laughs> so look, Christopher Columbus came over here, and the reason why they, they mess with Christopher, Christopher Columbus like that. It's because that boy stumbled on a gold mine. He saw a whole bunch of land. He just looking like, listen, if we put some folks to work this ground, we will make some money. So at the same time, they cutting a the deal with the Africans because the Africans keep taking places over in Europe. They keep taking over Spain, all this stuff. So they at war with the Africans all the time. The Muslims, the Moors, that's what they call them, the Moors, they at they they war with them all the time. Right? So both of them is at us. The Europeans chased us out of Europe. The Africans don't like that we in Africa. So both of them is at us. So they got a common enemy. And guess what? We got new land that somebody need to work. I got an idea. How about we make peace and let's get these Hebrews. Right? So the Hebrews were taken. The name was changed to Negroes. Right? They put us over there. They first they called us Hebos. Right? They called us Hebos at first. Then they got, you know, different territories and all that. Niger means black. Long story short, they turned into Negro, right? They start calling us Negroes. They take our identity. They move us into America. And they make it to where black has no identity. You're just black. Right? You strip everything away from it and you're just black. Right? So that's how we get here. We're in captivity. Well, Moses, going back to the Passover... Moses took us from a captivity also. He took us from Egypt, where we were also slaves. Right? He came and got us. He took us into the wilderness. To take us into the wilderness, he put 10 plagues on, on Egypt. Right? The last of the 10 plagues was the death of the firstborn son of all of Egypt. That thing could have hit anybody. So the Most High God told us what? How did we escape, escape the plagues? TJ. We had to, very good. We had to kill a lamb, sacrifice a lamb, and put the blood of the lamb over our doorpost. By doing that, the angel of death passes over. That's where Passover comes from. So in other words, instead of touching our household, it skips our household. household. It passes over the household. So that's why every man had to have a lamb for his household. And for the ones with little families, you would share a lamb. But we would both take the blood, we'd put it over our doorpost along the sides there, along the top, right? And then go in the house 
and sit our butt down. If we came out the house, what would happen? Dead. That's on you. Whatever happened is on you. If we stay in the house, then we good. That, exactly. Right? Exactly. You had to stay in the house. So it's the same thing when we look at Yahushua, right? Yahushua was sacrificed for us, right? You know what I'm saying? Y'all heard the story of Jesus Christ, right? Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. Well, that's real. His name wasn't Jesus Christ, but that's what people call him through transliteration. Right? Ain't nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? They ain't nobody doing nothing nefarious. They just call him that just because words get switched up when you go into different languages, so it's pronounced differently. Right? But his what, name... What? what? Oh, no, you're alright, son. You're alright. Um, he just tried to get fired. You told his, name, his name was Yahushua. So Yahushua, he was sacrificed for us. Right? He was like the lamb. His blood is over our lives. Right? And therefore, it's passed over. He is the door for us. Right? And as long as we remain in him, then we're safe. How do you remain in him? You got to do what he say. This is John chapter 15. We're going to come back to John chapter 12. This is John chapter 15. Give me about verse. No, just start me off in verse 1. The, John, the whole thing of John 15. Oh, sheesh. Oh, thing good. Just start me off at verse one. This is John chapter fifteen, verse one. Fourteen and fifteen, and and seventeen, sixteen, yeah, good too. But seventeen too. Yeah, that was a nice little stretch. Yo, fourteen to seventeen. This right. is John chapter fifteen, verse one. Watch the book set. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Mm -hmm. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. Right. A husbandman is like think of that like a gardener. <laughs> right. When when you see husbandman in the in the Bible, don't think like oh he got a wife. Think he's a gardener. That's what I, think of it like a gardener, right? So that's why he's saying, I am the true vine, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like a branch, right? And my, my father is the gardener, right? So in other words, he keeps that vine healthy, right? Watch this. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away, right? So when you garden, <coughs> you have a plant growing. One of the things you have to do is you have to kind of clip away the parts that's not, that's not pure, that's not growing right, right? So like, if I got like a, if I got like a, a lemon tree like they got next door, right? They got a lemon tree. If they see that all these branches got fruit hanging from them, but this one branch, it just never had fruit. Well, in that branch, what happens with a tree? It absorbs the source. You know what I'm saying? So it starts absorbing water. If you clip it, then it can grow back with a better, you know what I'm saying, with better results. So you clip it instead of it just absorbing all the water and all the nutrients from the rest of the plant, the rest of the tree. So you clip it and then you let it grow back, right? So that's what a husband and a gardener would do. You know what I'm saying? You would kind of keep it. So he's saying everything that comes from me that don't bear fruit, that thing get clipped away. What is that talking about? Yeah, fruits of the spirit, right? When it's talking about when it's talking about fruit, it's talking about righteousness. Right? It's talking about doing the right thing. Right? This whole book teaches us how to do the right thing. That's what we talk about every week, right? Is is our history and how to do the right thing. So it's saying if it's not producing the right thing, then it gets pulled away. That's talking about us, right? So us who talking about, hey, yeah, I love Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. How do you know you're saved? Oh, because Jesus Christ died on the cross of mine. You know what I'm saying? Just rattle that thing off. But if that happens and you're not producing fruit, in other words, your life isn't, isn't demonstrated in a way that it is changed, then at that point, the Most High God eventually will clip you away. Right. This is what this is the message. I want to make sure we break it down because sometimes you can read this stuff. And it's like, oh, that sounds so beautiful. What he's telling you is, hey, I'm the vine and you can have a source through me. You can be you can get everything you need from me. However, your butt going to hell if you don't. It's basically what he said. Watch. If you don't believe me, watch it. <clears throat> and every branch that bears fruit, he pulls it, he pulls it that it may bring forth more fruit. Uh huh. Now, you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said the word is what makes us clean. Right? So when we get to feeling guilty and we get to feeling all this stuff, you have stuff in your mind be like, oh, I'm unworthy and I can never be saved and I can never, God can never forgive me and I can never get right. Well, then that means you don't believe the word. Because all that guilt, you know what I'm saying, regret, all that stuff is dirt. That's what that is. It's filthiness. It's dirt. So that means you're unclean. That's fine. It's fine to recognize the symptom of being unclean. Once you recognize the symptom, then you treat the symptom and you treat the sickness. The way you treat the symptom and the sickness is you 
you get the word, the word will make you clean. <coughs> but then when you start reading the word, you obey the word, that makes you clean. That's all you have to tell yourself. Because that's what the book, the book is saying that. And the whole crux of everything is believe the book. There's no, there's no reason to believe that you can't come back from something unless the book says you can't come back from it. Right? And the only thing that's in a book that says you can't come back from it is blaspheme and the Holy Ghost. Right? So unless you one of these, you know what I'm saying? One of them, uh, what's uh, the devil worshiper people? What's it called? Uh, Not the atheist. Sat Satanist? Yeah, the Satanist. Like you know what I'm saying? It's a different name. Luciferians. The Luciferians. There we go. Unless you one of them Luciferians. They ain't even got the name right. Y'all ain't, you don't even know what they, they don't even know what they trying to anti-worship. People are silly. You know what I'm saying? But unless you one of these Luciferians, where they literally looking at, oh, the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying? It's that another. Then you know what I'm saying? It's like you ain't got no reason to feel like you can't come back from whatever you did. Right? We all done did some stuff. Right? We all done did some stuff. You know what I'm saying? It all happens. You know what I'm saying? But we can come back from that stuff. We just gotta believe the word. Right? And then you gotta want it, right? You gotta wanna come back. You gotta wanna, you gotta wanna be clean. You know what I'm saying? And then having that, the word to make you clean. Let's keep going. Watch this. So he said he gonna cut off some branches. You know what I'm saying? If you bear fruit, then he's gonna prune you, make you bear more fruit. You know what I'm saying? And the word make you clean. What else he said? Abide in me and I in you. Mm -hmm. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. All right? He say, abide in me. Abide means like stay. So just like we were talking about the house, you got to stay in the house and you stay from Passover. Right? He's saying, abide in me. Stay in me and I'll stay in you. And you say, watch this. Keep going. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. if, a man, if a man abide not in me, he What's is it? cast forth as a branch and is withered. He said, if a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth just like a branch. And then what happens to him? What happened to a branch when you cut it off a tree? And it is withered. That thing dies. When the mess can come clean up, is that my baby? Is that my baby? Maybe. That sounds like a real cry. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Maybe, yeah. The bees in her hair. <laughs> Somebody go down there and get my baby. Oh, go get my baby. Put her in time now. Well, you don't get in trouble. You don't get in trouble. Because mom just told her not to. You want me to go get her first? No. Yeah, go get her. Don't tell her I told her she can come up here. Yeah. Um, put mail in the middle of that. <laughs> <laughs> but you look at it, he said you cut off the branch, the branch is going to wither. And that's what happens. The mess can come, they clean up the yard, and they, you know what I'm saying, they cut that stuff out. Then they go, and they always got the big old truck, right? They got the truck, and in the back, they got a trailer. And it's full of what? <clears throat> full of branches. Tools, and they're full of branches, <laughs> right? And they put all the branches there. They tie them things down. And they take it right up the street to Republic Service. They stand there. They, go, they wait in the car in this long line. And what happens to them branches when they get to, to the front of that line? Yeah, they put them things, and they go put it in the dumpster. Watch this. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And that ain't racist either when I say the mess and clean up the yard. Because I had this white dude that I tried to get to clean, clean up my yard. You know what I'm saying? And I was trying to, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know, I was trying to reverse racism real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, boy, go ahead and you know, clean that up for me. You know what I'm saying? White dude, he had come to my yard, but he never came on time. Never came on time. And then one time, I told him, I was like, yo, he had cleaned the yard. You know, I told him, I'm like, listen, I'm about to have a Bible study. You got to finish before Bible study. Right? He kept going. So I was like, all right, well, you know what I'm saying? I'll pay you when you're done, but you got to wait until after Bible study. He blowing me up during the Bible study. They're blowing me up. This, that, that. I need my money now. This, that, another. I'm like, bro, are you on drugs? Like, what are you doing? We already talked about this. Why are you acting like we ain't talking about it? So I never let him come back. And guess what I went back to? My Mexican homes. You know what I'm saying? Because they do it. Professional. Knock it out quick. You know what I'm saying? Patient about the money. I always try to pay people early. But they patient about the money. They ain't beating you down. They ain't hurting for it. None of that. You know what I'm saying? They do. They professional. Let's keep going. Watch this. <clears throat> baby girl, you okay? And daddy, baby. <laughs> if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's right. 
Herein is my father glorified. Herein is my father glorified. Right? So in other words, who been to church in here before? You've been to church before, right? You've been. I know Sister Danielle has been to church. You know what I'm talking about? We know Sister Danielle has been to church. You know what I'm saying? My, my mama has been to church. Oh, first half. You've been to church? church? You know what I'm saying? You've been to church? Oh, I'm yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know Brother Daniel has been to church too. You know what I'm saying? So we go to church. And one of the things that we go, the very first thing in the average church, what are they doing when you first go in there? Singing. Singing and praising God, right? Giving glory to God, right? And how do they how do they present that glory? Do a song. Sing it, yeah. They sing a song and they sing it, right? Oh God, we glorify you. They, we, my mama took me to the white church one time, right? It was like one of the first white churches she took me to. It was one of my favorites. <laughs> it was two white churches my mama took me to. Look, she took me to one and they served coffee. To this day, I can't drink coffee. Because my mama would tell me every time, don't you drink that coffee. I'll go run back there as soon as she walk away. Because they had, you know, the white church is always responsible. You know what I'm saying? They got somebody there to take the kids right back. <coughs> no, ma'am, we'll take the kids. This, that, and other. And they tell you, you know, my mama, she's like, yeah, take their bus. Let's go. Right? She go sit down. She enjoy her church. They take us to the back as soon as I get loose. I'm like, one second. Go to the coffee machine. <laughs> I'll fill that thing up with sugar. Drink it up. So that was my first favorite white church because of the coffee. You know what I'm saying? I can't drink coffee now. It mess me up. That's God telling me, you know, after the budget, right? But then there's another white church. It was like inside of this like little storefront. So you go inside of the white church, and almost every time we were going in there, they are singing a song. My God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with me. The power of my, my God is an awesome. And they, you know, it's the white people with them. I remember that song. So they would feel it, and it'd be a white on the drum. But I used to go in that thing like, oh yes, my God is all, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, that thing was exciting. But that's how they gave glory. They gave glory to God through what? So, oh, what you got right there. We got to come right back here and grab Isaiah chapter. Um... Oh, help me out. Isaiah. Woo. If you gonna boast, boast in this? Yeah. Uh, Which one we 20, always go to? Twenty-eight. Line up by line. What, what is that? Twenty-eight or twenty-nine? Isaiah twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. So I want twenty-nine. Give me Isaiah. Woo, that's bad. Twenty-nine. Woo, that's bad. I ain't got no business for getting that one. It's Isaiah chapter twenty-nine. Give me verse thirteen. Is what I want. Give me verse twelve. That's like <laughs> that's like that's how you better stop talking about these white folks. You best. <laughs> Is uh, Isaiah chapter 20, 29, verse. 13. Give me verse 12, though. Right. <clears throat> is Isaiah chapter 29, verse 12. What's the book say? And the, and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he says, I am not learned. Right? I don't have the information. The book is given to him, right? And saying, Read this. But the man who's getting, like, I don't know how to read. When they say, I'm not learned, I don't know how to read. I can't read it. I don't understand it, right? But watch this. Wherefore, the Lord says... Wherefore, because of that, right? When they say, wherefore, it's saying, because of that. Because the book, right, the scripture, is delivered to somebody, and they open it up, and they don't understand what they're reading, because of that, look. For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. These people with their mouth are near to me. They have to only be near to me with their mouth because they don't understand the book. There's no way. Listen. Yahushua just told us. Herein is my father glorified. My father is glorified. We're about to learn what? But he says, herein is my father glorified. So he's given us the key to how we glorify the father. Right? We see people often glorify, but they do it with their mouth through songs and through praise. And they say, oh, thank God. If you walk up, to the average black person right now. And you ask them, what's the phrase that always that they always which one is it? Bless and highly favored. Yeah, which one? What you say before blessing highly favored? It ain't God is good. There you go. Yeah, God is good all the time. That's one. If one what they, what's the one they respond always blessing highly favored? It ain't how you doing. Uh 
I don't know. Good morning. No, it ain't good morning. How you do it? Yeah, that's what it is. That's how you make it. No, no, no. You can't. You can't get that. It's more. It's a phrase you can say to any black person. And it just sometimes it get me because I be wanting to be like, look at God. No, I didn't look at God. I'm gonna think of it. God is but good. God, God is good. God is good. It definitely one. If you go up to the average black person and be like, you ain't even gotta know they but you walk up to him. God is good. You can't even help yourself all the time. God, I didn't want to say that. You know what I mean? You just say it. What you think of? I don't know. It's another one. Blessing Holly favorite is it. But you but it's a it's a it's something that you can say to any black person and they will respond with blessing Holly favorite. Oh my man. I'ma think of it. Right? But God is good all the time is, is one too, right? So you say God is good, you say all the time, right? So we, we're conditioned to, to represent God. It's people that don't even know God, don't love God, ain't never been to church, they ain't never read the Bible, and they will respond this way because it's only by lip. They don't have nothing to do with the inside, right? So this is what this is talking about, it's saying with their mouth, they near to me. They'll tell you, you know, God is good all the time. They'll tell you that. But it's only with their mouth. Watch this. Keep going. And their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. Mm -hmm. He said, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. In other words, the commandment of men. And that's what has to happen. If I don't understand the book, let's say, let's say I want to love God, right? Jesus Christ, I really want to love you. Then I open up the book. I don't understand. Nothing that's happening in this book. I'm looking at it. I'm like, Thou shalt, I don't know what this stuff means, but I still really want to love God. What I'm going to do? When it when y'all in school, right? A lot of you kids in here, right? Y'all in school, y'all was taught something. You forgot it. It happens, right? It happens. You forgot it, though. You was taught, you forgot it. Or maybe you was taught and you didn't study. Or whatever happened, right? And it come time to take a test. What you going to do when you don't really know this answer, but you got either multiple choices or somewhere you can write in the answer? What you going to do? <laughs> that boy cheap. Yeah, that boy over there cheap. That's, that's different. Yeah, I was yeah, that's it. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for that answer. <laughs> but, yeah, but actually, yeah, you get that. That's a good answer. <laughs> All right, yeah, to the grown folks. <laughs> When we had the Scantron, y'all still got Scantron? No. Nope. Right. Listen, we used to have Scantron. You know what I'm saying? They tell you get a number two darn pencil. Hey, do you get a blue little paper? You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes with pink. Blue. Or and green. Sometimes it was, yeah, yeah. It was pink, yeah, green. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you got, you know what I'm saying? Like all the questions right here, you have to write your name. You have to print it. But it's very nice because they wanted to run that thing through a machine and got to pick up your name. So you have to print it. You put it on there. You go and you gotta, and you gotta, you gotta color that 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 bubble in nice. Cause they give you A, B, C, or D. You know what I'm saying? You gotta color it in real nice. Cause if you don't color it in all the way, it ain't gonna pick up by the scantron machine. You gonna mess around and get it wrong. Sometimes you gotta go back to your teacher and be like, "No, I got that one right." You know what I'm saying? Show them that you colored it in, but the machine made a, a, a mistake. When you come across that question and you gotta fill out that scantron and you don't know it, you guess. You don't guess. You take a <clears> guess. <throat> You take your best guess. You be looking at it. You be looking like, it's L-U. In the story that you just read, because they, you know what I'm saying, they give you a story, you got to read it. And they tell you, close the book. <laughs> okay. All right, take the test. So in the story that you just read, when Sally went to the seashore, what did she, what are, they always give you a tricky one. What are the three things that she did not pick? I'd be like, good gracious, I'm supposed to remember what she didn't pick. You know what I mean? You be looking at you looking at the story. That thing be like, Sally did not pick candy canes, strawberries, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and watermelon. Be like, no, nah, Sally wasn't black. It wasn't that one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You go to another. Sally did not pick. You know what I'm saying? Then you look at you pick you pick one and be like, well, I don't even feel like some of this stuff can be picked. I'm gonna go with that one. And you just take a guess because you don't remember. That's what people do with the Bible. And then this, and they lie to us, right? They lie to us. They tell you, "Well, I've been reading the Bible. I mean, I I, didn't, I know the Bible back and forth. Well, I didn't read the Bible all my life. I didn't read the Bible, and it's not necessarily untrue that they read it, but they don't understand what they're reading. So they take guesses at what's going on. Their whole life is a test, right? So they take guesses. So that's how you get phrases like, 
Oh, just have faith. What they telling you is, listen, you can come to them complaining like, I feel like I feel like my wife is going to leave me, man. I'm telling you. She told me. She told me I got to take out the trash. And I'll be forgetting. I'll be taking it out. She says she's tired of that mess. And then look at you and be like, that's all right. Just have faith. And that makes sense to us because in our minds, it's just like, you're right. If I just believe God, he'll bring my wife right back to me. But that's not how this thing works. Right? Man, I really, really want this promotion at my job. I don't know if I'm going to get it, though. You ever, you ever go to, you know, do you, you ever had a friend or somebody that, like, was it too confident? What does it make you want to do? When your friend ain't that confident about something that you know they want, but they not that confident, what does it make you want to do? What? It would make you, it want to, it make you, it make you want to encourage them and pour into them, right? Your friend comes to you like, man, I don't, I don't even feel like I'm going to get this job, but I apply for it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really got the experience, though. You know what I'm saying? I got the education. I just ain't got the experience. You know what I'm talking about? You look at him and be like, no, nah, man, you, man, I'm telling you, bro, you do good at your job. You got this. Right? Yeah, I feel you, but there's a lot of people that do good at my job. Right? You know what the Christian gonna tell you? I'm telling you, just have faith in God. But that's not, that's a guess. That's people, those are situations that come to the average Christian or the average person that believe the Bible and they have to guess at how it works because they don't really understand the book. Do you think having faith in God has anything directly to do with whether you get a job or not? Are you like, is your thinking that? Do you think that's what faith in God means? You think you believe in God to give you a job? That's secondary. You believe God to obey him. Grab, grab a, a John chapter 15. You believe God to obey him. And in John 15, he just told you, if you do that, you ask for anything that you want. The Most High God gives us the desires that we have once our desire is him. But we have it backwards. We start just wanting stuff. The Most High God ain't feeding to somebody that got an addiction. That's crazy. And when I say addiction, I'm not talking about weed, drinking, and drugs and all that. I'm talking about an addiction to sin. An addiction to money. You got people right now today, there is never enough money for anybody. Matter of fact, if you, if you got somebody to come and tell you, no, nah, that's enough. No, nah, I'm making enough. I tell people all the time, like, no, nah, honestly, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want that. You know, I don't even want that. But I don't even want to go for that position. They be looking at me like I'm crazy at work. Like, don't you know you can be VP? This, that, and the other. Why don't you just? Like, no, that's not. I'm really not. Interested. I'm good. Like, I'm good. I'm good right now. I'm good. And I've said that at every level of my job. I ain't never been to college. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never, you know what I'm saying? We, we, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that don't count. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I passed a couple classes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, we were there. You know what I'm <laughs> I don't know if we were there for the right reasons. We were there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never been to, I ain't never really been to college, right? And I pass up all these people that got all this education. And every step of the way, I kid you not. My testimony is, no, nah, I'm really not interested in that role. And then somebody tap on me and be like, look, we really need you. Why don't you do this at another? Do you think that's me? I came into my job, my head down, quiet. That's God. But God rewards people who are Solomon. Y'all remember Solomon? Most of God told him, ask for whatever you want. What Solomon asked for? Wisdom and what else? The Christian sway, if y'all Christians, if y'all say wisdom, that's what the one the Christian can get that one. Nope. Understanding. understanding. Wisdom and understanding. For what purpose? To lead the people. To lead the people. Listen, <clears throat> understand that model. When you ask God for something, don't just ask him for something. Ask him for the, what the root is and ask him for a purpose. Right? That's what he did. He said, listen, I want wisdom and understanding to lead your people. Your desire at that point is God. So guess what God going to give you? Everything you ask for. 
and what you didn't ask for. Right? But that comes with being content. If you're not content, you're going to ask for the riches. And that's what happened with Solomon. Most High God said, since you didn't ask me for the riches, I'm going to give you that also. But it's difficult for people right now. It's all about getting money. You a millionaire. Oh, now, now, man, I'm, I got to be a multi-millionaire. You a multi-millionaire. Man, I'm trying to get 100 M. 200 M. Okay, now you 200 M's up. Man, I'm trying to catch hold. I want to get a billion. Okay, now you a billy, but Elon Musk got a hundred bills. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and it never stops. It never stops. It's never enough. Right? You start off, you know what I'm saying? What, what we used to say, we, you know what I'm saying? We just broke out here in these streets, couldn't do darn nothing. <laughs> what would you say? Man, listen, I just want enough money where I could just go out every now and again. We go out every now and again. Now I'm just like, well, I just want to do this. Now I just want to do that. Now I just, I move my gold pump all the time. Oh, I made it when I buy a house. Now I got a house. Now, if I mean, if I own two houses, though, <laughs> then I really made it. After that, okay, now, when I do, it's, it's just, it's, it's constant and it's evil. Like, that stuff is wrong. You do that to yourself. You can't, you got to stop yourself. I got to do it all the time. I just got to re reset my thoughts. Like, no, we are good. Like, we are good. Oh, my God has been good to us. Whatever he give us is good. From this point out, whatever he give us is good. What did Jacob say? Oh, y'all lucky I can't remember where that is. Good. Food and Raymond. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, food and where is that? Uh, I don't remember. Give me. Eleven? No, it ain't 11. Give me Genesis. Give me Genesis 31. 30, 11? Say like Genesis 31. Very close. Very close. <clears throat> what? 12? Oh, no, I don't know if it's 12. We'll see. I don't remember. So we got to see. I'm taking a guess with Genesis 31. We got to see. Danielle, you looking it up for me? Danielle, you looking it up for me? Food and Raymond. I don't think it's 31. I think that's too late. It's probably like 20 something. But it can't be 26. It can't be 27. You can never go wrong with that. Uh, type in Jacob, Food, and Raymond. Jacob, Food, and Raymond, Genesis. You type in NoFo, it should spit it out to you. Yeah. 27 is Genesis. Is 27 really? No, not that one. Not that one. Yeah, I talked about when the, when the kids were born. You made it to 31? Yeah. I don't think it's 31, no. Uh, 31 is when he was trying to get away from Laban. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Twenty-eight, twenty. This is uh, Genesis chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty. <clears throat> and Jacob vowed a vow, saying, "If God will be with me." Well, this is the vow that Jacob. <laughs> you got to understand that all of our perspective, excuse me, our perspective has to be based off of our fathers, right? The promises, the interactions that our fathers had. Jacob is one of our fathers, right? Moses is one of our fathers. David and Solomon, that's, those are our fathers. So when we look at them, we look at their interactions, and we have to be based our, our interactions with God off of that because that came before us. That's what we stand on, right? So that's what we're looking at here. We look at Jacob and watch Jacob's, watch Jacob's interaction with the Most High God at this point. Jacob made a vow. What happened? And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me. Will if God me, will be with me. And will keep me in this way that I go. And he will keep me in this way that I go. And will give me bread to eat. And he'll give me bread to eat. And clothes to put on. And clothes to put on. So that I come again to my fathers. Uh-huh. In peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. So that's the condition <clears throat> that he put on God. 
it's important for us to understand this. Before we had all the book, before all the conditions was laid out, this is what a person said. Listen, you can be my God. Understand that. This is before he had all the information. He's telling God, look, you can be my God as long as you do these things. God's response to that, look. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Mm -hmm. That's it. So now you look at God's response to that. And he makes him the father of all of Israel. Like the gravity of that is something that we have to internalize. He didn't know anything about God. I mean, I'm not going to say he didn't. That's not true. He knew, he knew stuff about God. He didn't have the information, the full revelation, or the, as much of the revelation as we have. Right? So in his mind, he thinks he can set forth a deal for God and say, hey, look, these are my conditions. You want to be my God? I just need these things from you. If you do these things, you my God. That was acceptable to God. Because what he asked for. The same thing with Solomon. Solomon asked for wisdom and understanding to lead the people. That's acceptable to God because of what you asked for. If our desire is not God. Then our desires can never be fulfilled by God. So you can't say I'll have faith in God for some desire that you have. Until your faith in God causes him to be your desire. In other words, until your faith in God causes you to obey him. When your life reflects God, that's when you can be confident in what you ask for. We sitting here praying and that's rolling dice. If God answered it, then he answered it just because you just happened to say something that he, you know what I'm saying? From God's point of view, it's like, <coughs> so look, this is what happened. I got, so it worked. We got a thing called a suggestion, uh, a suggestion. Yeah, like a suggestion box. It's not called a suggestion box, but it's like a suggestion box, right? So anybody can go in there and they can type in what they want. They can say, hey, this, that, and other, da, 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 da. Now, every morning, I'm talking with all the leaders, and we're coming up with ideas. We're looking at problems on the floor. We're looking like, okay, we need to change this. We need to change that. Ooh, we can implement this idea. We can do this, right? We have ideas all the time. We don't tell everybody about the ideas we're coming up with. We just make them rolling. And once it's a fact, then we put it out there and we tell people about it. Every now and again... We get a suggestion from people that says, hey, you know what? It'd be really nice if we put a coffee machine inside of the break room, right? It just so happens that this is already in the work because we were just talking about this in our leadership meeting saying, hey, let's put a coffee room in the, in the break room, right? So now when they write that suggestion, we had already, this plan is already in motion. Somebody had already thought of it. But when they wrote the suggestion, that's their idea in their mind, Right? Guess what I'm going to say to that suggestion? That's a great idea. We're going to do that. It's going to be here on X, Y, Z, this, that, and other. How does that person feel? Good. You know what? I came up with a good suggestion. And leadership took my suggestion. Right? Is that really what happened? No. Leadership was about to do this thing anyway. And you just had to say something about it. Good. You're right. Let's do it. Well, that's how sometimes it is with us and God. We get to praying for some stuff. Like, God... Please save Ukraine. Well, maybe he is about to save Ukraine anyway. We'll see how that prayer is going to turn out. You know what I'm saying? But maybe he is going to save him anyway. God, please do this, that, and the other. Maybe that was going to, like, he may have already had that in the plan. So sometimes our prayers are answered because that's already according to God's plan, which is appropriate. That's good. But if you want to feel confident, then you make your life a part of God's plan. That way you, you can't miss because you know anything you ask for is within his plan. If you're out here living sin, how you know what you ask for is within his he ain't about to, He's not helping nobody sin. This is not going to happen. So that's why we got to stay in him. We stay in him, then we ask for what we want. Let's go back. It's John chapter 15. <clears throat> Because we still got to figure out how do we stay in him, right? That's why we came here, because we still got to tie it back to the Passover and stay in the sign of the house, right? It's John chapter 15. What verse we leave off on? Seven. It's John chapter 15, verse 7. Let's see what the book says. 
If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. Uh huh. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. Uh huh. So shall you be my disciples. Uh huh. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. He said, as the father has loved me, so shall I have loved you. So I loved you just like the father loved me. And then he says, continue in my love. Watch this, though. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. So listen, if you could, if you keep my commandments, you shall stay in my love. We're giving you the formula right now. Listen, if you stay in me, you're going to give fruit. If you give fruit, that's how you glorify the father. If you if you glorify the father and you stay in me, then you I love you just like the father loved me. And you should stay in you should stay in my love. Right. The way that you stay in my love is you keep my commandments. So if you break all that down. How do you stay in Yahushua? You keep the commandments. Watch this. Even as even as I kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Uh huh. These things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Uh huh. This is my commandment that you love one another as I loved you. That's right. Greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Uh huh. And look, hold on. Look at the condition. Right. Greater man. Look. Greater love. Look. He's saying. The greatest love that a person can have is that he gives his life for another person. All right? So that's the greatest love that a person can have. That he gives his life for his friend. Watch this. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So let's break that down. Sometimes you can read this stuff and it sounds beautiful and it just go right over your head. Right? Greater love. You read that they sound like Shakespeare wrote it. Greater love. Huh? Are you like Shakespeare? You think it's hard like to understand? Yeah. Yeah, it is sometimes. But look, you look at it and you think you think this thing is like poetry. You look at it like greater love has no man than this. That he gives his life for his friend. And you are my friend if you keep my commandments. Oh, he just loves people. Right? You didn't look at it. But that's not what the man said. The man said. If you don't keep my commandment, you are not my friend, and I did not die for you. Right? He gave it to you in the positive, but if you reverse it, you can understand what's excluded from those conditions. He's saying a man who dies for his friends is showing the greatest love. You are his friend if you keep his commandments. Therefore, if you don't keep his commandments, you are not his friend. And if you are not his friend, and the man did not give up his life for you. In an act of love, at least. Right? He gave up his life to own. Yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole different transaction yeah, right, for you. Right. He gave his life for all of us. But listen, when he gave it up for you for love, it's a totally different transaction from just giving it up from, I just want to put a down payment against what I'm about to do to your butt. Right? It's a totally different situation. So he's telling you these things. Well, watch what he say after this. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knows not what his Lord does. Uh -huh. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Mm -hmm. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and mm -hmm. ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Mm -hmm. That whatsoever you shall ask of the father in my name, he may give you. Mm -hmm. These things I command you that you love one another. Mm -hmm. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. Y'all know, know what we do, we tend to do when the world hates us? We break. We conform. Right? We start to feel that pressure and turn into what the world is. Start to compromise. You got to ask yourself, why is it that so many people compromise? How many people just stand tall on the truth? You can find so many people that make an excuse like, oh, well, that's not that big of a deal. You can't find too many people that just stand on like, no, that's what it's saying. That's what I'm about to do. Matter of fact, when you do find that people, what is the, the person, what is the world going to say about that person? Crazy. Crazy. Legalistic. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, in a cult. You know what I mean? Time we didn't got, you know what I'm saying? Accused of being right. in a cult. I'm definitely a cult leader. You know what I'm saying? They're going to put me in Waco, Texas. You know what I'm saying? But that's the stuff that they do. They rather see, look, 
I ain't never taught nobody to have mess with little kids like these other, you know what I'm saying, with that, that dude in Waco who was messing with the little kid, marrying the little girls, and you know what I'm saying, and uh and uh and had multiple wives and all this. I ain't never taught nobody to mess with a little kid. I ain't never taught nobody, I ain't never taught nobody to 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 have multiple wives. I ain't never taught nobody to kill nobody. You know what I'm saying? Waco, listen, them police were running there. Y'all saw that doc documentary what? Them police jumped in, them boy, you burned that. Black, black, got you right back at them boy. They killed a couple cops, didn't they? Them cops, them cops lit they butt on fire. <laughs> Damn, them, them boy lit them boys on fire. Them boy, they treat them boys like black folk. <laughs> look, but look, that's crazy though. Look how much white folk got to do to get treated like black folk. Yeah, they got to do some wild stuff. They got to do a lot. Yeah. See, in New York, I forget where it was. In New York, they dropped, they dropped a bomb. You know what I'm saying? Like they dropped a bomb in like this apartment building or something. With black folks who live it. Just on some red. Like, we wasn't shooting and trying to kill police. Just on some regular, regular bow. Right? And Tulsa, all we doing is getting money. They drop bombs. Legal money. You know what I'm talking about? We ain't got to listen. It ain't. It's with legal money. The business is legal money. Listen, the, no criminal nothing. The tolerance level for black people is very low. It's very low. Right, very, very, very. That's why you see the police interaction with black people versus white folks is oftentimes different. Right, there's always some exceptions. You always gonna see uh, a white man, shoot, you know, a white cop shoot another white man just because you know, I'm saying whatever, he lose the handle. That's it's out there. It's not like that. It never happened. But generally, generally, in my own life, <clears throat> and I ain't never been an unruly dude. Almost every time I got pulled over, it was hostile. It was hot. That thing was never like a hey sir. Well, it was only a few times it was like a hey sir. How you done? No, no, you, you, you were speed. Right? But a lot of them times, this first thing, get out the car. Like, what? What, what, what are you talking about? Get out the car! Grab me, stop resisting! I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I promise you I'm cool. I'm a calm guy. I know. Same thing I wanted to do. Right? But that's what they do. I remember me and my boy, you know what I'm saying, I was driving my sister car. You know what I'm saying? We were driving, you know what I'm saying? We were in North Town. We were driving, you know, we dressed different. We had different people at that time. So we looked apart. You know what I'm saying? They had the hoodies and the rags and all that stuff. We doing so we out there, we driving. And them boy they pull us over. Bloop, bloop, you know what I'm saying? I was like, all right. And so I'm in a car. My sister car is a Saturn, all purple. You know what I'm saying? And the license plate say too cute in pink. I remember that. Right? You was there? Nah, no, nah, I remember that license plate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was me and Marty. You know what I'm saying? So we're there, we sitting there, and we like, oh, okay, let's see how this go. Completely legal, I think. Was I legal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was legal. You know what I'm saying? Completely legal, right? Didn't have nothing in the car. We is good. So I'm like, okay, let's see how this go. But I know how Northtown is. The Northtown police, I don't know what they is now, but back in the day, the Northtown police, listen, so I know how they is. So I'm looking, so this lady get out. Then the dude get out. They get on both sides. Boom. On the hand, on the burner. <clears throat> Let me see your license and registration. This, that, another. Give it to them. They go back to the car. They come back. All right, everybody out the car. Come on, let's do it. Everybody out the car. I'm like, well, hold on. What's the problem? What's going on? Well, you just don't look like a too cute and pink type of guy. I'm looking like, sheesh, Louise. I'm like, it's my sister's car, man. They look at it. Just that, another. Run it. Check and see if it's stolen. Okay, cool. After that, the lady, you know, after they see it ain't nothing, right? They started trying to be nice, but her way of being nice was like, so, what high school are you guys in? I'm like, no, we're out of high school. Oh. She's like, oh. Um, what did she say? She said, no, 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 no. We said, well, we graduated. She said, what high school did you go to? I said, well, we graduated from Western. She's like, oh, you guys graduated. That doesn't happen often. They tell like this. I looked at that lady and I was like, and I looked at Marty, I was like, listen, this can go very different right now. Should I chill or not? We both was like, no, let's just chill. Because we know what they do. We know what they do. They know, we know that they try to get a rise out of you and then they beat you up and they put you in the back and then take you into jail. You sit there overnight and now you got this charge on you that's sitting with you that you assaulted a police officer or you resisted arrest or whatever. Just something that they can book you. All right, so sometimes you got to chill, but that's what you got to eat as a black man. Right, you gotta sometimes you gotta eat that, and that stuff stick with you all the time. It stick with you. 
right? It's a it's a hit to your pride. It's a hit to your ego, and you just gotta you know gotta live with that. So you got black people that struggle with that. Because on one hand, it's like you just pump me out, right? And so that's why you get the black people that on one side they looking like, no nah, man, fight the power. <coughs> no, nah, we need to have our own Black Panther like party. So that way we can protect ourselves from police. We want to confront it. Right? Then you got the other side just like, I just want to live. Right? I just want to walk away from this interaction. Neither side is wrong, but also neither side is right. So it's a it's a predicament that we in that the most high God intentionally puts us in because he puts us in this situation because we're not supposed to get relief. I was talking to the brother uh yesterday, and he posted on Twitter. He said, what do y'all think? Should people flee Babylon? And when he say Babylon, he's talking about the prophecy. He's talking about prophecy. And oftentimes we consider America to be to fit the prophecy of Babylon. Right. So when the, when they say, do you flee Babylon? Because the prophecy says flee Babylon. It literally says that. Right. It says flee Babylon. Talking about our people. They say, hey, should we leave America? Right. Should we try to escape America and go to another country? Or should we wait? Until what they call the second exodus. Until the Most High God gives us another like Passover-like situation. right, Where he takes us out of captivity, takes us into the wilderness, and takes us into the promised land. That is going to happen, right? But the question is, should you wait for it? Or should you leave so that when judgment comes to America, we're not here for that judgment? Because it's going to be plagues, right? It's going to be all types of plagues. It's going to be crazy stuff happening. Right? It's going to be stuff like you ain't never seen. Like, it was a... It was a tornado in California, Southern California, in L.A., right? It was like a tornado in L.A., and that stuff got people freaking out. But it's like, like that's light. You know what I'm saying? It's like snow blizzards now in Texas. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all types of weird stuff. Out, but it's like, all this stuff is light. This is nothing. It's going to be stuff happening that people just be like, I can't explain it. I don't know what that means, how in the world that happening. And these are all the plays. When we talk about Revelations again, or if y'all go back and watch the, Re Re uh, the Revelation series, Y'all can learn about all that stuff that's going to be happening, right? When this stuff happens, there's Hebrews right now that's like, should we, because they, th they see it as happening to America. Should we be here or should we leave America before it happens? What's the right thing to do? And the thing is that we have to understand, grab Ezekiel for me, Ezekiel chapter 20, give me verse 31. <coughs> the thing that we have to understand is there's nowhere that we can flee to, right? We're in this condition not because the most high God is telling us, hey, run from it. No, we tried that. You have to look, you have to know our history and look at the history. Our history is we was in Israel. We left Israel, went into Europe, and went into Africa. That was running. We left Europe and Africa and went as slaves. We left slaves and tried to escape the plantations. That was running. We end up in the north and end up out west. When we get out west, they gentrify us. And they put us in, in little neighborhoods, little ghettos, they call it. Right? And then after doing that, we start to find ways out of that situation by selling drugs, by scamming, by doing whatever we can to keep the conditions of our people as good as possible until we get good at it and we get greedy. So now we just drug kingpins just because. Right? All that is running. There's no escaping there. The most I got didn't put us here so that we can run from stuff. He put us here to deal with it, to confront it, until we get to a point. Oh, we got right there. Grab Leviticus chapter 26. Give me what? Leviticus chapter 26, verse 31, maybe? 32? Real quick. Give me Leviticus chapter 26, verse 32. And then after that, we got to go back to Ezekiel chapter 20. Because it's important that we understand the purpose of us being here and what needs to happen. <coughs> like, it's no, there's no, one thing you got to understand with God, there's no shortcuts and nobody gets by. Like, there's no way to wiggle around a punishment, wiggle around the curse. You got to deal with it and it got to be confronted. Right? This is Leviticus chapter 26, what I want, 32, 31? And, and I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries into desolation. No, nah, you know what I'm saying? You walk contrary to me, I work contrary to you. That is, let's see, 40. 40? 
This is uh, it's, uh, this is uh, Leviticus chapter twenty six, verse forty. Watch what the book says. If they shall confess confess their iniquity, this is what we got to do, right? This is what he wants us to do as a people, not just one individual, as a people, as a as the general population of Hebrews. He wants us to do what? If they shall confess their iniquity, we got to confess our sins and the iniquity of their fathers, and confess the sins of our fathers, right? It's not just our sins. We have to say. God, I've been messing up. I've been a Christian all this time wearing crosses around my neck, jumping around church, acting like I'm speaking in tongues, darn, sitting here messing with others, you know what I'm saying, doing all types of stuff, right? Making a darn mess. I've been messed up, God. Then on top of that, I got to say, and my daddy was messed up, and his daddy was messed up, and our father sinned against you. Then what else we got to do? With their trespass, which they trespassed against me. Uh-huh. And that also they have walked contrary unto me. So then we got to admit, you know what, God, this whole time that I've been a Christian and had this cross on my neck and I've been saying, you know what? Up or down, God is always by my side. And I love God. You know what you got to admit? That was a lie, God. I've been walking contrary to you. I've been working against you, God. I've been going to church every darn Sunday or I've been not going to church every darn Sunday, whatever I've been doing. I have been sinning against you. I've been doing whatever I want to do, and that has been against you. And what else do we got to admit? This is the hardest one. They have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them. And no I lie, God put this in there for a reason. <coughs> you talk to the average Christian. One thing, they omit that they sin. Christian quick to admit that they sin. They ain't got me. They ain't. That's light work for them. You know what Light work. I don't know everybody's sin. You know what I'm saying? It's impossible to stop sinning. A Christian? Let me tell you something. They dropped that thing. See it? They, they dropped that thing fast. And, no, we, don't. we definitely see it. That's when they claim the faith. They get on top of that. I'm a sinner. Just like everyone else. You know, they going to put some sin on everybody. Look, just like everybody else. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure we clear. Make sure we all in the same boat here. Right? They going to make everybody sin. But one thing they will never do is say that God left. No matter what happened, they're going to tell you, but God never left me. They're going to start quoting books that ain't got nothing to do with him. You know, God said he will never leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> like, no, he wouldn't talk to you. <laughs> just, he said that now. Your name ain't Joshua. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't talking to you. He was talking to a very specific person when he said that. You know what I'm saying? He said, I knew you from the womb. Yeah. He, wouldn't, he wouldn't talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Your name ain't Jeremiah. Now. You better relax. Yeah, because what they do, you when you're a Christian, all you gotta do, they kind of close your eye. Where my where book at? Yeah, book. This is what you do. This is a good Christian. The best you can get out of a Christian. Let me tell you something. It's always level to everything. You ever y'all kids, y'all say that it's level. Y'all, you know what I say? Kids be saying that it's level. Does y'all be saying that? Y'all be saying that? That's not a cool thing to say. No. Oh. Level. We be saying that. You know, like that's the kids that be saying this level. It's level to this. That's not what kids say. All right, whatever. So it's levels to the Christians, right? So you can get you a basic Christian. But when you get the top of the top Christian, like I mean like the Christian, like the creme de la Christian, this is what they do. This is the best you're going to get out of No, I don't like that. They open. God will never leave you nor forsake you. You know what they're going to say? God yeah. led me to this verse. Well, you didn't randomly <laughs> flip through that Bible 17 times until you found something that you darn like. And now you're going to post on Facebook that I woke up this morning and God just put it on my heart to turn right to that That's why you ain't never, you did not turn right to it. Three different times you flipped to something else and it wasn't what you wanted and you closed it, went back to sleep and woke back up so you could tell that lie. But that's what we do as Christians, right? We can't just pick out verses out of context. That's why when we read the book, you never see us just reading the book and just picking something like, oh, well, let's just start here and read it because it sounds good. That never happens with us. No, what we do is boring. That's why we only got three listeners, three people that view the thing. That stuff ain't fancy and all fun like everybody else. This thing ain't going to make you, you ain't about to walk away Nine times out of ten, you walk by, you walk away from this study thinking, I don't even know what David mean to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
why am I learning about gear? Boom. You know what I mean? Like, that was interesting, but, uh, or you walk away like, that one kind of hurt. Those are the two feelings that you should be walking away with generally. Ugh. It's very rare that you don't walk out feeling like, oh, I needed that. Now I can take on my week. That's what you get from a Christian church. Because it's about encouragement. It's about a positive experience and making you feel good. That's not what the book is meant to do. The book is made to crush you. The book is made to teach you. You're supposed to walk here with new information, with a new understanding. And that understanding is supposed to make you feel a certain way. Like, I'm not, do I don't feel like I'm doing, I don't even feel comfortable people can just sit here and you just like, I. Right. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you not being all right. I'm okay with some mid. It's some people that came in here. And I, listen, I don't be choosing. I don't be choosing. I just go through the book. Y'all know it. I just go through the book. Sometimes people come in here on the wall of the And it just so, it just happened to be the day that we end up talking about something that's impacting their life. And their wife, or was not their wife, just happens to be there with them. And I got to tell you that you can only be married once. You think I wanted to? You think? Wait, listen, that's what Moses said. We happen to be reading what Moses said. That's tough. That's hard for me. But guess what? I ain't skipping it. Ain't like I'm gonna be like, mm, I know that's your second marriage, so we just gonna let's just uh, T, let's skip. No, we reading this thing in order, and we gonna cover it, and we gonna touch it just the order it came in, because that's what it's about. There's no dodging. Go to a church and find where they read something in order. Every week you are gonna be learning about grace, mercy. Forgiveness, faith. definitely tithing. Favor, faith. You know what I'm saying? All of the Christian buzz turn. That's what you learn every week, and they recycle the same. <coughs> it's a dude on on uh, Instagram. He be mocking the Christian pastors. Oh, you know that. Oh, that boy. <laughs> I wish I could do it like he do it. Oh, y'all would hate the Christian would hate me if I had his power. <laughs> oh, that boy is good. I'm going to send it to y'all because I, I ain't even going to try to mimic it. That boy good, though. That boy is like, he is like, he is like, I was on my computer. <laughs> he said, and I was trying to, I think he said, I tried to turn it on, but it was unplugged. <laughs> so he took like a regular Windows computer situation and turned it into a sermon, bro. But he did it just like the pastor be doing. And sometimes when you unplug from the source of your life, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was sending to y'all. That thing was hilarious, but that's what they do. They take these obscure, abstract thoughts, they turn it into encouragement, and they always give you hope with God on your side. And it's fine to give people hope with God, but do it based off of the scripture. Do it based off of the word, because the average time, just the reason why we ain't got a lot of people that come here and a lot of, a lot of people that watch, you won't get hope off of the scripture because it attacks you. And you have to make a decision. You have to decide I'm accepting this attack and I want to change or I'm running from it. That's why you'll see people and y'all have seen them. Y'all have heard them. Y'all have been here for a while. They sit right here and they stand up and say, boy, that was some word. I ain't never heard the word. And then I never see them again. Because it's not. They Listen, ain't nobody. Woo, listen, I'm not. There's a lot of things that I'm like unsure about in my life, right? One thing that I am not <coughs> sure about. The word get taught right here. Period. There's a that I have there's nothing I'm more confident about in my entire life than my knowledge of this word and that the word is communicated properly out here. Right? So there's no doubt about that. When these people come in here, there's no doubt with them and they confirm it. But I never see them again. And the reason for that is it's tough. But guess what? Even that is prophesied in the book. That's kind of how I know, like, okay, for sure. If there's a whole bunch of people that come here with this type of word being preached, God is doing something. But until God do like a miracle or something like that, I don't feel like we're going to get 3,000 people at once. You know what I'm talking about? I just don't expect that. I don't see it. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be some little, you know what I'm saying, little pockets. You know what I'm saying? The miracles start coming. That's when all the people will come in. Because that's what we respond to. That's what our people respond to as a miracle. You know what I'm saying? If I told Danielle to come up here right now and I put my hand on her head and I said, Demon, get out of her! You ain't, she, ain't, she ain't got no... Look, Demon, get out of her! 
And I told Danielle, okay, now just start jumping around and act like something happened. And then yeah, she holds the baby up like that. Oh, 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 oh. Let me tell you something. Tomorrow we'll have a million views. Tomorrow we'll have a million views. Be like, man, I'm telling you, that boy, he always been preaching the truth. That's all you have to do. That's right. Yeah. They say the scriptures say our people are a people of signs and wonder. Right? That's how Yahushua got his work done. If Yahushua would have just been talking to you know how arrogant. Oh, y'all what you was? He walking around like, you know what I'm saying? No. I am the son. And if you knew the father, you would know who I am. <laughs> you are your father, the devil. You Can him. you imagine somebody walking up to you saying that, talking about they from God? Yeah, they calling you the devil. Like, I'm asking you, I'm just asking you a simple question. What's your name, bro? Hmm. If you knew the father, you would know who I am. You are of your father, the devil. <laughs> All right, listen, bro. Let me tell you something. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. I'm just trying to find out who you. Are. That's why them boys wanted to. That's why they wanted to kill him. Cause he he running off of the mouth, and when they look at him, it's like you ain't nobody. Like, what are you talking about? That's why they wanted to kill him. If it wasn't for miracles, if it wasn't for this man saying, oh, "Okay, oh, you think it's you think it's hard that I say I forgive his sins?" Okay, how difficult it is when I tell this man to get up and walk, and he's been paralyzed. Y'all see him paralyzed. Y'all whole life this man been paralyzed. Which one do you think is harder? Me saying I forgive your sins or me telling him to get up and walk? Then you tell him the man get up and walk and that man start walking? That's a bad boy. That's a bad boy. You look at that and you look like well, maybe he got some truth to what he's saying. Maybe it's a reason he got that smart mouth. Right? It's like, all right, well, let's go with it. That's how it works. It's the signs and why. I kid you not. If 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 I jumped on TV right now and said America in seven days if you don't repent of your sin lightning bolts will come and strike the capital and then some lightning bolts came and struck the capital a we viral the net listen we out of here these people gonna build me a church down the street right here and I'm gonna tell them I'm like no nah, keep it right here they gonna build me a church right here and be like build that thing up it's good but and look until that type of stuff starts yeah, happening FBI gonna come through boom oh yeah they get. They, get, they might get me. Listen, they might get me just, you know what I'm saying? They might get me. Y'all saw when we were talking about the Jewish thing. They cut they, they shut that whole video. Y'all remember that? Shut the whole video down. Look, on three different platforms. Because, you know, we live streamed the Twitter. Inst we live streamed the Tim what we live Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You know what I'm saying? All at the same time. So they go out all three of them. All three of them things got shut down. Yeah, no, I think Twitter is the only one that didn't get shut down. Because Elon Musk bought it. He probably, you know what I'm saying? He probably wouldn't trip. You know what I'm saying? But Facebook <laughs> and YouTube shut down. We were talking about right around that Kyrie thing and all that. We were talking about trying to lay out the truth about how that stuff worked. Them boys shut the whole live stream down. A video got cut off. Wouldn't let me upload it after that. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like, okay, for sure. These people, you know what I'm saying? They, they don't. They, so, you know what I'm saying? If we ever get more than like 200 views, you know what I'm saying? Them boys might, they might try to come get me at any point. But that's all right. They got to do what they got to do, and I got to do what I got to do. Right? You can't ever be deterred by what somebody might do. That's crazy. That's crazy. Right? Not when you, well, not when you serve God. When you serve God, you got a mission. When they told Paul, you remember, you remember with Paul, when Paul was on his way back to, uh, back to Rome, and they told Paul, they was like, look, man, it's a vision that you're going to be in, in cuffs. You know what I'm saying? They're going to gaffle you up, and you're going to be in prison. Tell me when that made Paul say, nah, man, I think I'm just going to hang out, you know what I'm saying, hang out in, uh, you know what I'm saying, Ephesus a little bit longer. No, nah, Paul's like, no, nah, I got to make it, by all means, I have to make it to Rome. No one was there. He told the people, he was like, I know what awaits me. He believed it wholeheartedly, I know what awaits me. And still, you cannot deter the mission just because of what people do. And what's our mission? Just obey the, we ain't even got nothing lost. Listen, if the most high God told us to do, like, if the most high God came and whispered in one of y'all ear, you know what I'm saying? Daniel, I want you to go to Cowabunga Bay, stand at the highest slide, and yell at the top of it, Yahuwah is king, seven times. Let me tell you how quick we would do that. Because that feel like special. You know what I'm saying? We'd be looking like, oh, no, I got to go to Cowabunga. Nothing would be able to stop us from doing that lofty thing. I get to be the center of attention. I heard God tell me do this. He telling us to do simple stuff. No, just mind your business. <coughs> obey my word. 
Don't do nothing wrong. Love your brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? He can do simple stuff. Guess what? Oh, that's just so hard. It's impossible to stop sinning. <laughs> right? Because that's how we get tricked in our mind. It's simple stuff. Just treat people right. You know what I'm saying? Just treat you people right. You know, they don't, don't be doing nothing you ain't supposed to be doing. Oh, that's just so difficult. Ain't nobody going to think I'm cool in school. That's y'all butts. Nobody going to think I'm cool in school. I'm going to look lame. I'm not going to be accepted. That's y'all butts. That's stuff y'all got to deal with. Then, in a couple years, how old are you? 15, how old are you? 14? You 15 too? You 13? How old are you? You 15? How old are you? 12? How old are you? 16? 17? So, so like you, in like a couple years, all this silly stuff you doing now, right? You going to look. And you going to, like, you 17. So, like, in four years, you going to be like, that was so stupid. That quick, though. You got to understand, like, that's how quick you're going to, like, realize how stupid that was, right? Then you're going to do other stupid stuff because you don't think you're smart in four years. You're going to do other stupid stuff. Then it's going to be four or five more years that you're going to look back and be like, I cannot believe I was so stupid. And that's going to continue to happen until you're about 30-something. I can't tell you what happened after that because I'm only 35. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you, every, and I've never really been, been a stupid guy in my mind. Yeah, that stuff I did like last year, though, I was like, that was so stupid. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, you have to be able to look ahead. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the greatest gift that God can give you as a young person, to look ahead and not be so caught in the moment. Because the moment is gone. Like, the moment is gone. You can't live in that moment. You got to live ahead. It's like, now it's like, uh, it's like I got to put myself in the mindset. It's like, honestly, I really don't know nothing. No, it. Just fucking really don't know nothing. If you don't know nothing but the book, you are. Right. Yeah, it's like every time I think I know something, and then it's like, dang, like I really didn't know nothing. Yeah, Grab, uh, go back to Exodus chapter twelve. Let's finish this out. <sighs> y'all, y'all, young people, y'all, y'all need to know this. What? Who, who did I have a talk with the other day? That was you, right? No, not about credit. No, we ain't gonna talk about what we talked about. But yeah, that that that's what we here for. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not everybody, right? Sometimes you got different type of adults. You know what I'm saying? Like some adults, some adults is like, I don't want to hear that stuff, right? Some adults is unreasonable. I'm not gonna lie to you because they because it's trauma and they're scared. They look at somebody they love. And they, they see you start to go down the path and they get scared. So they, they, they tell you whatever they can to make you not go down that path, right? They'll tell you, no, man, it's all, it's all craziness down that path. Don't do it. No, don't have a boyfriend. No, don't do that another. Don't even talk to boys. Don't even look in boys' direction. That's what they're going to say, right? Don't have a girlfriend. Don't even look in girls' direction. Don't even do that to another. Because what they're doing is, is trauma. They don't even want to engage in the conversation because it's trauma. They know what could come there. They know the risks. So they just want to scare you from the whole thing. And that's the approach they take. They mean well when they do it, but that's the approach they take. I want y'all to know, though. Are everybody, all the kids in this room, y'all have uncles. Y'all have loved ones that will literally talk you through your situation. No matter what the situation is. Right? Y'all may not know of us, of what we used to be. But I guarantee you, we have been through a lot of the stuff that y'all are thinking about, it may be the, you know, 2002, 2001 version of it. You know what I'm saying? But the principle of it is still going to be the same. And then on top of that, y'all got people that are probably wiser than anybody else that y'all know. Right? Only because we, we obey this book. We look at this book. So not only can we tell you, hey, listen, this is how it works. This is what she thinking. This is what he thinking. This is why they do it. This, that, and other. This is what the people do on the street. This is why they talk to you like this. This is why you can't look at them like that. This is why they want to fight. This is why they try to hate on you. This is why they do that. Not only can we break all of that situation down for you, but then after we get it said and done, this is how you need to handle it. And this is why you need to stay avoid it. This is what you need to do. Right? Try us. Like, don't feel like you have to take on all this stuff by yourself. 
Because you don't. Some people do. Like, for real, some people do have to take it on all about themselves. We did. We had nobody to go. Listen, I could have went to my uncle, and my uncle would be like, no, don't gang bang. Then they walk right out the door. BPS, blood. Tell me what you doing. You know what I'm saying? So when I see him, I'm looking at him like, I mean, I'm not going to gang bang nobody. Man, that looks nice. Right? So what do you think I end up doing? I end up going down the same path. Because on one hand, yes, you tell me don't do it. It's scary. It's that another. You ain't nothing here in this life. It's that another. But I love you and you my man. And you the hardest dude I ever knew. So I kind of want to be like you. Right? Because now it becomes attractive. Dang, that's the path that everybody die on and you still doing it? Oh, that boy a gangster for real. You know what I'm saying? So now it becomes attractive to me. And you do it. Right? Same thing with messing with these little girls. Same thing, all this stuff, right? It's like, everybody tell you the same thing, but then everybody doing it at the same time. So I'm like, well, let me, you know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and take my shake at it. Listen, y'all got people that can explain this stuff to you. Every last one of y'all think y'all getting away with something. You're not. Because nobody say, nobody really say nothing. Nobody proactively comes to you and be like, hey, I know what you're doing. Because that's, 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 we know how it is to be kids. I don't know, say on nobody. Oh yeah. I'll be on. Yeah. Well, yeah, he oh he got out of dodge. No, he right. That boy, yeah, that boy got pressure. You know that boy got that. The kids say pressure now, don't they? Oh, but that means something different, huh? That's the girls, something when they say pressure. I'm pressure. <laughs> it's I giving. Pressure. It's giving. Yeah, it's giving pressure. <laughs> it ain't giving pressure. <laughs> no. No. Mm. Bro, we was way cooler than y'all. Right? Right. We were rolling y'all. Way cooler. Way cooler. Yeah, but cooler than y'all. We were running circles around y'all cool. You know what I'm saying? Y'all lightweight. You know Then one day I'll turn on the, you know what I'm saying? You know the kid. Back in our day, the teachers used to have projectors. You know what I'm saying? So they put something on the thing. You put it on the projector and everything. One day I'll turn on the projector and let y'all see. You know what I'm saying? See the, see the old light. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah? They hide it. Ain't nothing like ours back then. You pull down things. Yeah, my history teacher, you pull down the things. Oh, okay. You project it on the board. But what they use to project it? Are they using this little thing and you slide a little piece of paper on it? No. no. Oh, okay, no, that ain't what I'm talking about. Then. Project it. I'm talking about you slide a little piece of paper on it. You know what I'm saying? They got a light shining through it this way and it projected on the light that way. Uh-huh. So you take the paper and the teacher never get the paper right on the first time. <coughs> so the first time she put it on there, it's always upside down. If you gotta flip it and then turn it around like that, and then you gotta take notes on what on it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, man, that's all I know. <laughs> that ain't always was upside down. See, like he put it on these silly butts. Always put it on there. Oh, twirling around. Like, I'm supposed to take notes. So it's like when there's like it's like a thing. So it's like a magnifying glass. So when he's writing on his paper right here, you can see it on the board because it's like it's like whoa. I don't know. Somebody gonna check on that, that brother. Right, but no, nah, but seriously, I want y'all to uh, I want y'all to take that serious. And I want y'all to take that to heart. That y'all got people. Me, T, you know what I'm saying? And the, and the rest of the adults as well. But me and T for sure. I guarantee you, we will sit you down privately and we will talk you through whatever you're going through. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever you unsure about. No matter how I feel. And I'm going to tell you wrong. I'm going to tell you you ain't got no business. And I'm like, okay, but either way, this is how we solve it. This is how we get to where we need to go. Right? Because otherwise, y'all going to be out here fit, trying to figure this stuff out for yourself. And you guys are dumb. Like you guys, are, And I don't mean that in, you know, to be mean to y'all. But you guys are not. You guys are not smart. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all, y'all brains don't even function properly. Y'all be looking at it. Y'all be conjuring up some crazy ideas in them little brains. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. When you, listen, when that stuff unfolds, and as an adult, you see it. Look, as a, as a kid, I feel y'all. Like, in my kid brain, when I was y'all age... Man, I feel Matter of fact, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'd have did that thing better than y'all. But I understand. 
the way that y'all come with it. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing they don't understand. It's like, we was the remarkable one. You know what I'm saying? We is the remarkable one of bad kids. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we can teach y'all how to be bad better. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a, it's a whole different, like, level. It, it's funny, but I'm dead serious. Like, seriously, I want y'all, I want y'all to understand that and I want y'all to take that. Let us talk you through it. Let us help you figure this stuff out. Okay, boy. Because yeah. a lot of this stuff, y'all just don't understand. And y'all living in the moment and y'all not thinking ahead. Y'all not thinking about, and when I make this decision, these are going to be the impacts of it. And this is how it's going to make my life harder. And it's tough as a kid to think ahead. It's tough as a kid because you just, you just tired. You just, you think that you know, you're learning so much stuff and you think you know what you need to know. And you just tired of feeling like you shackled and you want to do something different and you want to experience something different and you want a different life than what you got. I get it. I understand. It's going to be plenty of time. I promise. I promise. That boy snoring. Goodness gracious. Who's that hard? That would make no sense. He got over on me again. This is Exodus chapter 12. Where we leave off? Verse 3. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. Let's finish this out. And speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, uh -huh. according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Mm -hmm. and if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Uh huh. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Uh -huh. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Mm -hmm. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Right? So at nightfall, we were supposed to kill this, this, this lamb. And then we take it and we put it over our doors. Watch this. Keep going. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. They shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire and unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Mm -hmm. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs and with his Puritanists, they're uh, right. So another way, he said, you got to grill that thing. He said, don't try to boil it. You can boil lamb too, right? You can put lamb, you can boil, right? He's like, don't try to boil it. You got to grill. He said, roast it with fire. You got to grill that thing. Watch it. Keep going. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste, right? In other words, Passover. He said, you should eat it ready to go. Because guess what happened after he killed all the Egyptians, all, or all the firstborn of the Egyptians? Moses was like, can we go now? And Pharaoh was like, man, just go. Y'all didn't kill my baby. You know what I'm saying? Just go. Right? Pharaoh was distraught. He let us go. So we had to get up out of there before. Because you know how many times Pharaoh told us we can go in and change his mind? Ten times. Yeah. I don't think it was ten times, but ten plagues hit him. That's how many times we asked to go. But it was at least three, four, five times in there that he was like, yeah, y'all go. Nah, I changed my mind. Y'all can't go nowhere. So when he said go this time, Moses was like, let's go. But Moses like God told us, we had to be ready. When you say gird up your loin, think of it like a belt. So have your belt on, your shoes on, be ready to go. And we eating our lamb, right? Then that thing happened. Moses gave us the word. Pew! We out of there. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over I pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. This day, day should be unto you as a memorial. What's a memorial? Something to remember. It's what you use to remember. So that's why we came together this day. That's why we celebrate. That's why we eat together and we enjoy one another on this day. Because it's a memorial. It's something that we got to remember. This is history for our people. This is history that was taken from us by these slave owners that whipped this stuff out of our moms and our dads. Right. So this stuff doesn't get passed down to us. Instead, we get passed down from the CCSD school system. They ain't even telling us about the darn Santa Dar Maria. They ain't even teaching us their history. Right. Right. So this is stuff that we got to pass down to make sure we have a memory, a memorial of what our people went through. And then also we can look forward to what's going to happen. Right. And what did happen through Yahweh Shul also. Right. Keep going. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. Right? So, so for the next seven days, 
We eat unleavened bread. We have nothing unleavened. So when you go home, nothing if you leavened. have, I mean, what did I say? You said nothing unleavened. So you have nothing leavened. We should have nothing leavened. Excuse me. Right? So when you go home, what you need to do is you need to take all the bread out your house with your mama permission. If your mama is not here, your daddy permission. If your daddy is not here, because y'all want to try to get you a whooping, you go in. You We're take mama. Dead. Listen, if I took my mama a fresh loaf of bread and threw that in the trash, <laughs> let me tell you something. Woo! <laughs> my mama, I'm scared right now. My mama's still here. She's Louise. But you know what I'm saying? If your mom, dad here, you good. You know what I'm saying? You take it. You put it, if your mom and dad is not sitting here right now, then you make sure you have a conversation first and see what you're allowed to do. You know what I'm saying? Nevertheless, do not eat any leaven bread. What's leaven bread? It's bread that rises, right? So you want bread that's flat. Like tortilla. No yeast. Crackers. You know what I'm Like a tortilla, cracker, and all that stuff. That's the type of bread you could eat. Otherwise, just don't mess with it at all. If you ain't got no, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't you go get you no darn cheeseburger. Don't go get no darn. Don't make no peanut butter and jelly sandwich. No, all that is made with leavened bread. Go get you a little taco. You know, that's what I do. Usually, the week of leavened bread, I just eat a bunch of taco. You can't lose. Eat a bunch of taco. Did she have croutons in that salad? Yes. She's supposed to take them croutons out. That was my fault, though. I forgot to tell her. Croutons is leavened. You know what I'm saying? That's what Shanice told me. Hmm. Shanice is like, yeah, it's just regular bread. Then you put it in the of oil. Do something this, something that. Shanice knows. Shanice knows. She was supposed to come, but you know, she couldn't make it. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? So no leaven for, for the next seven days. So today, the day that just passed, right? Oh. Earlier today was the first day of unleavened bread. That lasts seven days, right? Thursday this is the first day. Thursday will be the last day, right? So it's the first day of unleavened bread, then we got seven days and we'll go. All right. Any questions? Oh, all right. Well, let's pray out there. You got by me. I was supposed to make them stand up. You know what I'm saying?